Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to talk about uh, my progress in the field of 3D printing using my Creality Ender 3 printer and I'll sort of discuss some of the things I've printed, some of the resources I've found that I'd like to share with you uh, because it's a very exciting learning experience and it's been three weeks since I got the printer and I've been loving every minute of learning all about it. I just sit there and watch the printer sometimes mesmerized by the process, really, really love it. So the first thing to know about is Thingiverse, which is sort of the online repository of uh, all different sorts of uh, shared 3D model files that you can download, you can search through. I do have a Thingiverse account and uh, I have a link for that in the description. But, uh, I spend a fair bit of time just trawling through Thingiverse, looking for things to, to print, interesting models and things like that. So these are some of the things that I've found on Thingiverse. That's one of the first things I printed. Little scaled down human skull, very, very realistic. I just like having that sitting on my bench. Amazingly detailed. Here's a little uh, thing called a Benchy, which is it's kind of like a performance test for your printer. You can work out uh, whether the settings are correctly set up. Uh, it, it does things like bridging across an open gap and uh, fine detail sort of slopes and things like that. So my Benchy came out quite well, so I think my settings are pretty good at the moment. There's also the Retro Pilot. Uh, it's called the Manfred Pilot and it's based on uh, a, a modern pilot, actually Manfred Radius, I think his name is, or Radius or something like that. But he's a modern acrobatic glider pilot. Search for Manfred Radius and I'm sure you'll find and you'll see that it is actually his face. So I painted that up in kind of retro colors, I suppose. There are lots of interesting designs and this is a sort of a print in place, uh, spinner, fiddler sort of thing with little printed circular ball bearings in there, which is pretty amazing. I just printed that to check out how these print in place moving parts work. And I just think that's absolutely awesome. Here's a little octopus with articulated arms, which just sort of feels really nice on your hand. That is about the size of a blue ringed octopus, the famous deadly blue ringed octopus that we have uh, around our rock pools in this area. So I might paint that up with nice bright blue rings. Cute little octopus that just kind of feels really, really nice on your hand. I love model boats. Uh, and this is uh, the biggest print that I've done. I think it was about a 12 hour print for the top of the hull and the whole thing probably took, I don't know, 18 hours all up, I suppose. But it's based on a real boat called uh, a Haven 12.5, I think, which is 12 and a half feet on the waterline, 16 feet overall. So it's, it's an actual wooden boat that you can build. You can buy plans for and build them. Uh, I think it's a Hirschhoff design or something like that. Even the sails are 3D printed. I'm actually, I don't really like the 3D printed sails. I'm going to make some cloth ones, I think. But you can print the stand and the rigging and everything as well. I just love the, uh, the sort of curvy shapes of, of authentic model boats. Uh, it's, a, it's a hobby that I think I'll get into when I'm <laughs> too old for RC. Now this is one print that I did have a problem with and it, this is the top half from the waterline up. I left it on to print overnight and I came back and that's all that was printed. And the problem was that the filament had got tangled on the spool and it just stopped extruding basically. And that taught me a valuable lesson that you should never ever let go of the filament when you're loading it on because it'll spring back and it'll get tangled and even though you think you've got rid of the tangle loaded onto the machine it will eventually knot up and just stop so i had to find out where that that uh, overlap knot was cut off those spools and start again valuable lesson never ever let go of the filament always control it when you uh, open a new spool hang on to the filament, don't let go of it until it's loaded into the machine, even when you're swapping colors as well. Now this is very interesting, the Smithsonian Institute institution scanned something like uh, 2,311 of their uh, exhibits or, or items in their collection. And this one is uh, a prehistoric shark tooth, uh, a shark called a megalodon, which is the biggest shark this would have come from an absolutely enormous and hideously frightening sized shark, uh, like a great white shark, but um, 10 times bigger, I think, or something like that. But yeah, look at the size of that tooth. I'm 
fascinated by sharks. I love sharks, actually. I, I, I like photographing them underwater. Uh, not really things to be scared of, but uh, something like a megalodon this size would be unbelievable. And I've also printed the uh, flat wing modification parts designed by Bonafide Pirate, Keith, for the Nano Talon. My friend Mark has an original Nano Talon with the dihedral wings and he wanted to turn it into a flat version. So uh, I'll put a link to Keith's flat wing mod parts. Uh, printed them in the green because Mark wanted green. I'll put links to all of these things in the description below so you can see uh, where to find them. Now these are all, th all things that I haven't had to design myself. Uh, you can just download the files from Thingiverse or, or wherever, wherever they are, import them into your slicer program. I use Cura, which is nice and easy to use. Generate the file, plug it into the printer, leave it alone and uh, you come back and it's the model sitting there on the, on the bed. I've also been getting some good advice from my friend Neil from RCDC. Uh, I'll put a link to his, his uh, website in the description. Neil's been heavy duty 3D printing for 10 years, so he has heaps of experience, uh, can get, give good advice. I've noticed recently uh, some 3D printing videos have been popping up on his channel, so it's worth a, worth a look. Go and check out RCDC. Now what really interests me is uh, designing things myself and uh, that's kind of a, quite, a, quite a step up in the 3D printing area. You have to learn uh, a 3D design program. I was using SketchUp, although you can get by, it, it's, it's not the perfect program for designing 3D models. It's, it's more for doing 3D architectural drawings, I suppose. Uh, and a lot of people advised me to look at Fusion 360 and uh, I started using that and I found it quite quite good for basic stuff but as soon as you want to do something more complex it gets very very difficult so i found a youtube channel that uh, has really really helped me and that is product design online a guy called kevin kennedy who does fantastically clear and professionally produced tutorials uh, he has a series learn fusion 360 in in 30 days or something like that so he's got 30 videos short videos uh picking a particular product that uses particular features of, of Fusion 360 and uh, I'm working my way through that at the moment and uh, I can highly recommend it. Product Design Online by Kevin Kennedy, fantastic. He's even commented on one of my videos too, which, was, uh, which I thought was fantastic. So uh, highly worth having a look at that one if you're learning Fusion 360. So this, this is the first video I followed on, on uh, Product Design Online and that's to do a changeable ink stamp introduces you to a few different concepts like projecting one shape onto another shape, uh, lofting and uh, introducing text and things like that. So that was a big step made possible by Kevin Kennedy's tutorials. That was fun. I tried designing uh, control horns, still working on, on them really to get them sort of light and strong enough. Here's a prop adapter, probably one of the easiest things you can design in a 3D program. Uh, that's so that the prop fits onto your motor shaft. Here's another thing I designed, just a little uh, push rod retainer. So instead of doing a Z bend, you can just do a 90 degree bend and then, then this clicks on and stops it coming off. The, that just clicks on there and it's uh, sort of held onto the control horn like that. Nice little design, that one. These are all on my channel on Thingiverse, so uh, I'll put a link to that, of course. Oh, here's someone, this is from Thingiverse as well. That's a servo extension cable keeper. Uh, that's just a little, little clip like that. You thread your servo extension through there, and that just stops it from pulling apart buried deep in your fuselage or whatever, which is a really, really good idea. Nice and simple and uh, lightweight servo extension keeper, that one. I like that. Mount for the Cadex Tarsia, the, the board and the camera there. Still working on that one. That's a clamp to hold down a flight control board. Uh, that's up on the Thingiverse. There's a tail mount for an FPV camera. And um, we're using that at the moment on my Trainstar Ascent to mount the FPV camera up on the tail. We have an old house with sort of windows with uh, sash windows with, with that rattle around. So uh, I made up a, a wedge that with a finger hole there that could be put into the window to stop it rattling. 
probably one of the most practical things I've designed so far. Um, as I said, I'm always fiddling with my fingers, so I made myself a, uh, a finger twirler. I didn't really want a spinner. That's just something I can play with while I'm answering your questions or editing videos or things like that. So just a nice uh, smooth shape with holes for my fingers to fit through. <laughs> anyway, lots of fun. And just recently, uh, I've been reviewing the Ranger 750 and I found that uh, it has a, a, an error in the thrust angle, needed a few degrees more thrust angle uh, to enable it to fly smoothly. And what I did was put some packing washers under the, the lower mount bolts. Uh, so that angled the uh, thrust angle down a little bit more. And I've also been chatting with uh, a guy called Pat via email and on YouTube. Uh, he has one of these for his son and, and uh, we've been chatting about how to get it flying nicely. He obviously has some skills in the 3D designing area because uh, he sent me a file for extra angle built in and uh, I've been testing that lately and that greatly improves uh, the performance and means that it flies level, doesn't, doesn't pitch down when you throttle up. Uh, and Pat's given me permission to put this on the Thingiverse account. So we have one with uh, five degree, one with six degree, and one with seven degree extra thrust angle. I think, it, I think the uh, six degree is the one I'm using at the moment, and that seemed to be working perfectly well. So if you have a range of 750 and you're having problems with pitch instability, then uh, swap to this pre-angled motor mount. There is one small issue I've been having with my bed started to sort of bubble up there and uh, it adheres a little bit too too well in this center section uh, so I just can't print in that area I can move the prints out to the outer areas and that's absolutely fine it's getting very noisy outside unfortunately the lawnmower man is here um, so to replace this bed which is sort of like a fiberglass base I guess uh, bought a replacement glass base with a uh, textured coating which is meant to keep it super flat and uh, release when it cools down so that's the next mod that I'll do uh, there is one other thing that I did and that was print this back for the LCD I kept uh, putting my fingers underneath here when I was uh, operating this and getting little zaps under there so I'm very happy with that it's a it's a boring print to do but uh, very necessary I think that's great so anyway, that's where my adventure in 3D printing has come so far. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll give you another update in the future.